All right, this is a follow-up on the video I did prior to this regarding um, the machine and the threading attachment and um, this machine versus the CNC, which, you know, with the CNC, unless you're doing it with a bar feed, you have to load the piece. Uh, you have to push the button, cycle button, and I guess someday they'll figure out a way to beat that so guys can go play video games all day and... Uh, uh, never get, you know, never, never do anything but push a button. That's it. But anyhow, um, so I, I, I thought I'd show the um, threader attachment up close and so you can see a little bit better uh, of the operation, a little close, close up and so on. Okay. Now I'm going to show automatic threading up close. Put a little oil on it, pull the button out to start it, and it starts to cut. It takes 10 cuts. Now, I was asked the question, why does it take 10 cuts? Well, because it's such a very fine thread. They were, the book, the Harnage book recommends for that thread, 10 cuts. More, more, a finer thread would be less cuts. A bigger thread would be more cuts. So that's the thing they recommend, 10 cuts. And it's taken off. If you try to do it in five cuts, it would just tear the thread up. That's it. Done. Okay, now I'm going to show you how the, um, the follower works. Bring this down, and you pull the control over here, and she starts cutting. That's it. Done. Okay, I'm going to show you another one now, just from a different angle. At the high speed. Get to stop, face it off. Turn. Same tool. One cut. Two cuts. Three cuts. This is the last cut. Slow it up. Change to the chamfer to uh, the uh, undercut tool. Bring it over here to my mark on the carriage wheel. Feed into number three mark. Back over a little bit. Dump it over to the left a little bit. Chamfer number four tool. Come in. Begins to stop, chamfer it off. Good, come in the inside. Okay, get this out of the way, change your tool around so it's out of the way. Slow the machine down, bring this in position. A little oil, pull the button. Takes ten cuts. Ten cuts. And automatically stop. There it is. And I just take my little nut here that I use for a gauge. Reverse it. Get a little bit of a file. Just knock some of the burrs off. That's it. Done. I've got uh, uh, 15, 16 of them made here, and they go pretty quickly. I've got another 30 in the tumble blaster over there, which I bought today at the Harbor Freight. I went and bought some. Pete, my friend Pete gave me a, one of them tumble blaster things. Tumble, 
tumblers with the put the aggregate in there and it's supposed to go around. Well, you know, I let it go for a little while just to see how it's going to come out. But it looks like to me it's going to polish the parts, and I I don't want that look. I like the uh, the uh, this is a dust blast look here. I think that looks a lot better. And then of course when it's all done, when a machine here's a, here's a machined one. Bring it up closer. I'm watching the. Got a little bit of stuff in there you got to clean out, but I'm going to soak them probably and clean them when we're done. And um, that's about it. Uh, I got to set up for the second operation. Now, somebody asked me about the jaws now. This is about the jaws. Let me get a jaw. This is a set I made for the cross part. Now, this is a good chuck. This chuck here is a Cushman chuck. I was really lucky to get this. This is the exact chuck that they sell for this machine. It's got the proper backing plate. Now, a lot of plate, a lot of uh, spindles, those is like a South Bend, for example. They're eight threads per inch, and like two and a quarter eight or something. There's some standard number. This one is two and three sixteenths ten. It's proprietary to hardness. You can only use that on a hardness. And then he also, like on the new DSMA, that has a, a spindle, a tapered spindle that goes on and it locks on. Now that's good because on that machine it can go forward and reverse without unscrewing. See, with, the, with this machine you got to be careful when you go in reverse because it'll unscrew itself. Uh, of course it takes the collet, it takes all the collets, it takes all the attachments, everything to go with it. And eventually, I've been buying a lot of them off of eBay, eventually I'll have all the attachments. My goal is to have all the attachments that were ever made for this machine. Not that I need them, I just want to collect them. I'm trying to preserve the, with, with the um, uh, the idea behind using this type of machine is. And um, anyway, these are the jaws now. They're aluminum. I made them. You can buy the jaws, but you see it's got a dovetail on it. Whereas the other type of jaws have like a key. A key and it's like, it, it's 90 degree keys. And uh, they're the standard jaws. But these were I had to make. And uh, uh, I had to make some more of them. But th what this is for now is eventually to hold it like sideways like this, see, so to hold, hold it like sideways to do the, side, to, to do the end. I think that's how it goes, like that somehow. I don't know why it doesn't fit in there. It has to fit a certain way. Yeah, that's it. See, it fits like that. Let me get closer. It fits like that. Of course, this one isn't machined, but anyway, I made these two sets of jaws, particularly for this machine and for this for this operation. And uh, I'm quite pleased with the operation. I was a little bit scared at first because I didn't know about it a little bit. But I figured, hey, other people have done it. I can do it. And I'm doing it. So <clears throat> got my own casting set up going now. I mean, I, I've got all the parts. I got to work on a little bit more. Make, I got to get the furnace going to make that, and I've got to set it up. But I've got all this stuff to do it. And thanks to my friend David uh, down in Delaware, he's been really a big, big help. And um, I can see myself actually going into doing some foundry work, and I'm considering, strongly considering, making castings for the live steam industry. And uh, appreciate all your uh, subscribe, all the subscribers, all your hits that I've been getting. I've been getting. I'm uh, reaching uh, a, a good number now that I'm happy about. I certainly enjoy doing these videos. I love the quality of my new camera. It was worth every penny that I paid for it. And in fact, I might get another one to have two cameras going. But uh, um, I'm hope you, hopefully you like the video about this machine, which I think is an awesome machine. They can be bought, I wouldn't say cheap, but inexpensively compared to CNC. I, like I said on the other video, I paid $2,600, $50 for this machine. And the new one I got, I only paid $2,000 for that one. And they're almost new, and they're Harnage. Now, Harnage is made in Elmira, New York. It's an American-made machine. They still carry the parts for it. Not cheap. They're not cheap parts, but you can get the parts. So you stick with, a, a you know, this, a Bridgeport. I have a Cincinnati mill. Stick with the American-made machines. You'll never have a problem. So, anyway, please subscribe to my videos. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this one.
and thanks for watching. See you again on the next video.